a business plan that is localized in your field. What I mean is that in every program you enroll for, there are entrepreneurship opportunities in every program. Right? You don't have to study business administration to become an entrepreneur. Right? Uh, if you are a physicist, right, there are things you can do to create, to create a job and create businesses. If you are a medical student, right, you can develop a business, a business plan around how to test up a clinic. Right? If you are in pharmacy, drug manufacturing company or sales, uh, if you are in engineering, electrical, whatever, there are a lot of business opportunities that are localized in your area. So what we expect you to do is to develop business plan around that area and you will submit it them for the Entrepreneurship League competition. This will be the major component of your CA. It's 30 marks. Yeah, it's the, because this course is purely practical, not theory. So the, uh, the business plan competition is 30 marks. So get to know about it right now so that you start asking the right questions at the right time. We are bringing people from outside. If you are not clear of, about the kind of opportunities you have in your field, you have an opportunity now to ask questions from your lecturers. So that is the important thing. The other issue I want to emphasize is the fact that uh, you people have an advantage right now over every other person that we have gradu graduated in the uh, University of Abuja. Now, from the, uh, within this week alone, I've received not less than five ex-graduates who came to me asking for certificate in entrepreneurship. That they did entrepreneurship courses in their two and three hundred level, and right now they are looking for it in the field. Central Bank just came out with a loan program whereby they are requesting that people should have certificate in entrepreneurship, and they need it. So I told them politely that, look, they are not qualified for that. But the people that will be qualified are those that are, we, we, we are starting with this program, which is you people. When you started in 200 level, by the time you, you graduate, you will not only be entitled to your certificate in your degree area, you will also have a certificate in entrepreneurship studies. You also, so you are, you are going to have two certificates. So it is important you get that. Uh, the, the, world, uh, the world outside there now is more about entrepreneurship and all that. Thing. So that's why we are taking it very seriously. So right now, what I'm going to do is that I don't want to waste further time, right? I want to invite the guest lecturer. And please, you have to be attentive. You have to listen. Listen and conduct yourself very well. They are not our staff that we can misbehave and get away with it. Please be disciplined, right? And conduct yourself in a proper manner. Uh, listen to the lecturer, whatever he has to say, whatever questions you have, you please ask him. Uh, but before I bring, invite him to the field, let me just give you a brief of who the person is. Yeah, uh, what I have here is that we have the, uh, the, the, the subject for today is uh, general business opportunities in the Nigerian economy. And Dr. Chijuke Ekechuku will be facilit facilitating it. He's an experienced economist as well as an experienced banker. He holds a PhD degree in finance, specializing in monetary policy. Uh, he's been past MD of Bristol Investment Limited and also a former Director General of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry. You know we are not talking about ordinary people here, right? These are your employers if you want to get employed in the field. So you really need to take them very seriously. Uh, he's currently the MD's Chief Executive Officer of Dignity Finance and Investment Limited. Dr. Chijoke 
Okechuku, we are, it is my pleasure to welcome you to University of Abuja to give us lectures today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good, yes. Um, thank you, Prof. First of all, let me let me congratulate you as the director of um, entrepreneurial studies in University of Abuja. In fact, this is um, this is one thing we think we have not gotten well in the education of Nigeria. And so this is the best step I have ever seen taken by any institution, especially federal institution. And this is, um, let me commend you and this school for it. <laughs> Dear students, it is indeed my pleasure to be in your midst today. Um, today was such a very busy day for me, but because it had to do with education, I decided to cancel every other appointment I had to be here today. Um, but before we get started, I, I usually want a rule, and that rule is that I plead with you for everybody to switch off your phone in the next for the period we are going to have this lecture, please switch off your phone for me. <clears throat> Is it possible? Okay, that's all right. Okay, the one that is possible is that avoid your phone for now. Otherwise, the reason we are here will be lost. Avoid your phone for now. Because while seated, I saw virtually everybody pressing one thing on the phone. Now, for the school to make this possible means that they have your interest, all your interest at heart. This kind of opportunity you may never get again um, for people to leave all that they are doing to come and speak to you from the practical side of it. Please, I want you to take advantage of this opportunity and don't miss anything. Pay attention. It's either you came here to pay attention or you should have remained somewhere else. But if you are here, please pay attention because we want all of you to succeed. All right. Um, this is about entrepreneurship. Who is an entrepreneur? I'm sure many of you know. But some of you may not also know. An entrepreneur is that person who takes all the decisions all the decisions in a business. He's the business owner. He's the one that employs people. He's the one that pays salaries. He's the one that does everything. He's the owner of the business. So you are the major risk taker. Um, as an entrepreneur, you are in school right now. And just like the prof said, Know in your heart that the era of finishing from school and saying, I'm looking for work, is gone. That era is gone completely. I knew many years ago that for life to be what it should be, that I don't have to depend on anybody. Even though I went through workplace, I still became an entrepreneur a long time ago. One thing he didn't say is that I also own a school that will be 20 years old by next year, a secondary school. <laughs> Bristol Academy. Anybody, have you heard about Bristol Academy before? Good. Now, I own Bristol Academy. That's being an entrepreneur. Okay. So, if we say this, Population of Nigeria today, we have almost 40% of Nigerians unemployed. That means people who even graduated before you have joined that percentage. 40% of Nigerians, gentlemen, you are distracting that activity. Leave, leave this man alone. Let him pay attention. 
We have 40% of Nigerians that are unemployed. And your own is to say, God forbid, that I will join that percentage. So I want you to say, God forbid, you will not join that percentage. Okay, good. You are in school right now just to have education. But once you leave from here, you must understand that you must be an employer of labor. You have to think of how to become an employer of labor. And that effort starts from now. As we are doing this lecture, it starts now. If you hadn't taken that decision before now, start thinking about it now. Um, there are many opportunities that exist. Now, wealth has left old men. Wealth has left old men. It's now in the hands of young men and women like you. Have you heard a name like Fluta Wave before? Fluta Wave? A young boy. Have you heard Paystack? You make payment online. Paystack, have you heard about it before? Little boys. And of course, Ope, have you heard about Ope before? Little boys. So don't think it's, um, okay, you heard about the boys that um, sponsored uh, Big Brother Africa, Big Brother Nigeria? Little boys that donated billions. And maybe some people thought they were doing some illegal business. No, genuine businesses generating money every day like you. And I'm sure some of you are already making money while sitting here or while in this school. So those opportunities exist. And so somebody will ask, where do they exist? They exist around you. Now, for you to be an entrepreneur, the first thing you have to do, and I want you to be writing something. If you're not writing something, you want to lose. Write something. The first opportunity you have to identify is around you. Where you are, the school, where you go to, there must be something that is not working well. So, in other words, there must be a latent need somewhere. Okay, let me give an instance. <clears throat> Is there anything that you would have expected to happen faster or quicker that does not happen? Let's take an instance. DSTV. We all know DSTV, isn't it? Now, when Nepa takes light, it takes almost another two minutes or three minutes before your DSTV can boot and boot and boot and boot. Before you can be watching a very beautiful game, football game. And so DSTV takes, um, Nepa takes light. Be before they bring it back, it will boot and boot and boot. The aspect of that game you wanted to watch is gone. Maybe that, before they even bring the thing back again, um, they would have scored a goal, and you didn't watch that goal. So an opportunity there for you is, is that, is there anything I can do, any device? I'm giving an example. Is there any device I can give to anybody that owns a TV that if they take light and bring it, immediately the thing starts? It doesn't have to roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. It will spend like three minutes before the thing gets back to that game again or that movie again. Is there anything I can device? that I can give to every individual that owns a TV, that once you have it and Nepa takes light and brings it back again, your TV will continue from exactly from where it, it, it stopped. That's a, that's a need, isn't it? That's a need. And so somebody has to think about it. One day I was thinking, is there anything I can do? Because you want to go and buy um, a cylinder of gas. You know cylinder of gas? Each time, the only way you will know the the, the, the volume in it is by shaking it and checking the weight. And I just said, why can't we have that thing you put on top that has a meter so that when you put it, you can actually have whether it is full or half or one quarter. So you don't need to carry it. You just put that thing and there will be a gauge. That thing does not exist up to today. And so it is a need that exists. So in other words, for you to be an entrepreneur, you must identify a need that everybody will buy into. You must, first of all, identify a need. So right now, start thinking, what is that thing that people need that they don't have? 
What is that thing? There are a million of them somewhere. The people who have all these companies I mentioned, we are sitting down and saying, why would we have to wait until InterSwitch makes transfers from one place to another? Can't we do our own? So there are many needs that exist today you have to start thinking about. In your own case, what is the issue? In your environment, in your village, wherever you come from, we all have those needs. So the entrepreneur is that person who sits down to identify a need, two needs, and then he starts working towards making sure those needs are met. Do you understand that? There are many of them like that, many, many of them. So, now, many times, we talk about how can we fund or finance such a thing. Many times, that is the first thing we have to start with. How can we fund or finance such a business? Let me also tell you that many times, those businesses don't need their own finance. They don't need bank finance. They need for you to do what you need to do in order for you to get the finances. So we're going to get through those opportunities as we move on. <clears throat> you agree with me that in every field, there is an opportunity. There is opportunity in all fields of life. The fact that these funds are moving right now, this was the creation and innovation of somebody. The person that created this fund to move, funds were created many, many years ago, before all of us were born, including me. But somebody thought it out to say, if I can produce something that blows like this, then people will have the kind of environment we have today. That's what somebody thought about. Another person thought about air conditioner. But that does not mean that cooling, the business of killing, is over. Even in producing this kind of thing, we can, improve on, we can improve on this. Somebody can improve on it. That was why the prof said, even people who are studying physics, you mustn't just be an economist or business admin or chemist, a chemist or anything. Whatever course you're studying, there are opportunities in that field you have an opportunity to make so much money. The seat you're sitting, if all the seats were allowed to stand the way they're supposed to stand, and you don't fold them. The issue that you can fold the seat was something that was thought of, thought about by somebody. The, the seats, once you stand up, the thing will fold on its own. Somebody thought about it. And so you have to start thinking now. Entrepreneurs must think. They don't just sit and follow the wave. Wherever the wave takes them to, they go. Entrepreneurs keep thinking every day. And when you think, as you move on, please carry a pen all the time. When you have an idea, something comes to your mind, write it down. Even if you don't have that book to write it, you must have a diary somewhere in your house or in your classroom, sorry, in your room where you, you have a diary. Once you go around and find something, come and write it down. It's an idea that has come. That idea, once you write it down, it is one idea. So you keep writing things, idea, uh, just, you keep writing things down and... When you start coming back to what you have written, you tick, can I do this? Yes, can I do this? Is it a need? You may have up to 10 things you have written down. It does not matter whether you are a man or you're a woman. In fact, most of the entrepreneurs we have today are women, ladies, young ladies that are doing exploits. Now, so once you identify what you want to do and your mind is so convinced that this is what I want to do, the first thing you have to do, pay attention, please. The first thing you have to do is just pray, pray over what you want to do. Just ask God to direct you. Because in all that we do, there is the aspect of God in everything we do. Do you believe that? Pray to God to help you, to direct you. On your own, you cannot do this. But God will help you to direct you, and he will direct you. Now, once you identify what you want to do, the first thing you do is to find where you can learn, learn how to do that thing. If it is to own a poultry, don't start by saying, oh, many people who started poultry never succeeded. 
your name is not many people. Your own name is not many people. There are other people also. There are other people who succeeded running poultry and are succeeding every day. So join that group of people who are succeeding. Don't go and join the negative side of them who are not succeeding. Now, the first thing you have to do if you want to do poultry alone, you either register in an institute or a training school where you're going to learn how to own a, a poultry, successful poultry. Or you go and register with an existing poultry and just go and learn how to do it. If you don't learn any business, don't go into it. That's number one rule. Except you understand that business. You cannot do a business you don't understand. You must understand it very, very well. And the, all the techniques, all the strategies, all the failures of that business, you must understand. All the risks of the business, you must understand. When you understand the risks, you must also understand all the mitigants of the risk. You must understand all of them. Now, when you have understood that business, you can start by saying, this is the business I want to do. If you must do that business, you must learn it. Then go and register the company with Corporate Affairs Commission. You must register a company in Corporate Affairs Commission. Once it is registered and you have trained yourself in that area, the next thing is, where will I start? Don't forget that many businesses you can even do from your house. Many businesses you can do from your house. There are people today who are buying and selling. They don't own a single item. They buy, they sell. They don't own a single item. They don't have single cobble uh, capital to do that business. So what do they do? They use your platform, internet platforms, all the Facebook and um, many of them that you have. They will advertise things they can have access to. Clothing, shoes, but they don't, have, they don't own those items. They advertise them and post. And so people will start ordering. Once you order, then they will order. It is even with your money sometimes that they will use to go and buy. You know, so there are things like that. You don't have to have an office to do most of these things. You don't have to have an office. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, opportunities exist in agriculture. Either in animal husbandry. Okay, let me also say, time is gone, the time has gone when you think being a graduate exonerates you from doing any kind of business. Today, we have photographers that are the best photographers in this country. We have them. You see them all over the place. Best photographers are graduates like you. And so, people who own Catering services are all graduates like you. Don't think there's any particular business meant for somebody who did not go to school. Uh, carpentry is not for them. No. All these businesses are for all of you. In fact, what your education is going to do for you is to give you enough ability, mental ability, educational ability, to be able to understand every bit of that business and to be able to put your accounts well. So, in agriculture, it's either you're going to the animal husbandry, of course, you're talking about pigry. I have a friend today who left, um, he retired from uh, Federal Ministry of, uh, I think, Defense. Defense, yes. He, he retired as a deputy director. He entered into fish, um, pigry. Pigry. Pigry is where you bring up pigs. He didn't start that business with so much money. I think with even less than 100,000, he started that business. The space was a space he created around his house, somewhere around his house. You know what he told me recently? He said if he knew what he knows today, he would have retired long time to start this business because the money he was making for pig, from Pigri, the money he was making for Pigri, he would, in, in a month, in a month, will look like what he made in a year from his salary as a civil servant. Do you believe that? That is the way it is. That's the way it is. So think of which business you want to do. Let it be piggy. Let it be the fact that you want to rear goods or anything you want to rear in animal husbandry. 
Let it be poetry. Go and learn every bit of it. Now, for him, people come all the way from Bayesa State. Chinese come all the way because that's a meat that Chinese like a lot. Pork. The meat of pig is called pork. Chinese like it a lot. So, from all the way from Bayelsa River State, they go to see him in Enugu, Enugu in uh, Enugu State. And every time people book ahead, I said, so why is the demand so much? Is it that there are no many people doing uh, pigri? He said, the people doing pigri in this country cannot be enough to meet the demand for pork. So, that is an opportunity there for you. All you need to do is to fold, fold your sleeves and say, this is what I want to do. There is a lot of business in it. A lot of business in it. Now, um, if you're doing crop farming, crop farming, in other words, you want to do a particular kind of uh, farming crops, you don't need to own one hectare of land. You don't need to. You don't need to own one hectare of land or two hectares of land. You don't need, you don't need to have a farm to do your kind of crops. So, um, there is this thing we, that, that we eat, it looks rough. Um, uh, broccoli, I don't know if you, if you know broccoli. Broccoli looks, it's a greenish thing, has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, nutrients. Before now, broccoli used to be very expensive. Very, very expensive. And I kept on asking, is it not possible that we can farm this thing in Nigeria? That time they used to import it from South Africa. But today, Nigerians have started uh, farming broccoli. Broccoli grows so fast, and it's a good thing, very nutritious in the body. All the supermarkets that we have today are all selling broccoli, and they, you buy them, and you, you, you sell them. So, <clears throat> opportunities exist. I have seen one video of a guy doing uh, cucumber, another lady doing cucumber, and it says the money they generate from cucumber sales is enough to pay 10 people, 20 people salaries. And you can imagine. Let me even shock you. Sometimes people say they are working in, say, a place where they are paid 60,000, and you think it is big, big, big salary. 60,000 naira monthly. A wheelbarrow pusher, a wheelbarrow, you know these guys who work in marketplaces, wheelbarrow pushers. By the time they make 5,000 every day, some of them make up to 5,000 every day, multiply 5,000 by six, it gives you six days, meaning that they went to work Monday to Saturday. If you multiply 5,000 by six days in a week, that will give you 30,000 naira. That is only for one week. Multiply 30,000 by four, you have 120,000 naira. That man has earned more than the person who is a civil servant wearing tie every day. Ordinary wheelbarrow pusher. So that will tell you what entrepreneurship does to all of us. So you can decide on what you want to, if you're doing agriculture, what kind of crop you want to grow. What kind of, are you doing fishery? Are you doing any kind? Identify it as what you want to do. First of all, you don't enter any business because somebody else has entered and is succeeding. You must have interest in it. You must have passion for that thing you want to do. So if it is something you don't have passion for, then there's no point get, going into it. So do you have passion for what you want to do? That's another thing you have to consider. <clears throat> so... A lot of people are into fashion today. Fashion, and they have their own um, um, brands. They have their own brand names. You know, they have their own brands. You can, you can, oh boy, what's your name? Huh? Moti. Okay. What about if this guy has a brand called Moti? Moti Fashions. Moti has become one super name for fashion. And every time somebody is laughing, okay, let me tell you a story about somebody. There's one guy in this town called Modi. Modi, Moody, Moody. He is into fashion. Some years ago, 
not even many, many years ago. Moody used to come. He studied in Unijos. I'm talking about somebody who still exists in this place. So if you know him, tell him somebody spoke about him. Many years ago, he would go to Abba and buy bales of materials for shirts. And then he would speak to a few people. And he used to be somewhere in Nepa Junction, somewhere in Wusetu. One small space. And we would leave office then. Then I was in banking. We would leave office to come and check what material he got from Abba. Moody, if I liked any particular one, he would pick it. He will cut two yards from there. Another one, he will pick it and cut you as from there. And I will tell him, make shirts. And some of us were coming to Moody's place um, to pick shirts. And then his tellers were in Guagualada. Guagualada, that's where his tellers were. From town, he will come to Guagualada like two times every day, giving shirts to um, his tellers to sew. Tellers, he didn't own them. He would also give them out to tell us, and then they, he will pay them, he will collect. Only for me to read this day newspaper one day, back page, and the former um, SA to the president on media, Shegu, um, what's his name now? Adeni, was writing about one young man. I said, ah, who's this person? Now, Modi today is a multi-millionaire. Multi, from starting just the other day, I'm talking about not up to, not more than 10 years ago, where he was just doing bills of material. Multi-millionaire today. Now today, Moody has uh, factories where he sews for the police, for the army, for navy, for customs, for prisons. And the guy that started just like one small boy. Moody has like two major buildings today in Maitama. That I know about. So when this uh, Shegu Adeni wrote about him and he started telling the story of this guy, I said, I probably know this story more than anybody else because I saw when the boy just started. And that's somebody's story. And that can be your story. That can just be your story. All you need to do is to believe in what you want to do. You must have conviction in what you want to do. Not today, you try and there is a small problem you know, then you run away from it again. You go and try another one. There's another small problem. You run away from it. You must be consistent with what you want to do. Remain with it and solve all the problems within that place. If Moody left what he was doing and went into another thing, oh, let me go and look for work. This one is not working. Today, that guy is paying well over 200 workers working for him, sewing for him, packaging, and he gets contracts in hundreds of millions. That is the art of staying together and staying committed. All right. There is also opportunity in furniture. In furniture, you have the woodwork. The woodwork is the fact that if you consider the number of schools that exist today in Nigeria, and when I say Nigeria, and I'm not saying just Abuja, your market should be a large market. Just know that Nigerian market is a large market. And when you grow, Africa will become your market and, of course, the world over. If you decide to go into furniture, just go and learn how to do it. I'm sure some of you have seen one guy somewhere who, a graduate, who already had his master's. In fact, he studied abroad, came back, learned how to do this. And you see him doing all these things. Today, he is doing super furniture for CBN for many institutions in this place. Just would work. Even if you, want, you don't want to do work for big people, big companies, consider the number of schools today and an average of 25 students will sit in a particular classroom. Consider the number of classrooms in a particular school. Consider the number of classrooms in all the schools. In, in fact, within Guagualade alone, imagine the number of schools that we have. Then imagine all parts of Abuja and imagine all parts of Nigeria. If you're wearing a shirt, a material that was made from India or China or Turkey, what makes it impossible for your own product to be exported to other countries? What makes it impossible for your own product to be exported to other countries? So 
you can actually decide to be an expert in woodwork. The first thing you have to do is to go and learn how to do it. Go and learn how to do it. Now, the, of course, Ofo Street is like the kind of thing you're sitting on that has foam. If you enter into any kind of market as an entrepreneur, I like it when people pay attention to me, please. If you enter into any kind of business, don't just enter like every other person is entering. Enter with a difference. You must enter with a difference. What is that thing about my business that people will see to say, oh, this one is different from others? What is that thing? So don't just come in and just do something that others are doing. Of course, it will just be like a, the bigger names will swallow your business. Enter with a difference. What is that thing that is unique about what I'm doing that others are not doing in their own product? Now, I talked about schools, opportunity of furniture in schools. What about the churches, the number of churches we have today? What about the number of offices? There is no single office today that does not have furniture. There is no single office that does not have furniture. Don't forget that I didn't say furniture. When you use the word furniture, it doesn't have S. So there is no single institution today that does not have furniture. So when you see the size of your market, you should know that, look, this is an opportunity for us to go in. It's an opportunity for us to go in. Identify what you want to do, go and learn about it, spend time to learn it, and then come out. Metal works, metal, metal works. <clears throat> This thing on the window is a metal work. That protector is a metal work. I have a colleague of mine in the, in the, in the, in the, in the industry, banking industry. His name is Austin Olu. I'm calling names so that you can confirm. Austin Olu left banking. His, the name of his company is Get Men. Get Men. Get Men. Austin, you know why I mentioned this name? So that you know that these are people who have also graduated from school, universities, and went to work at a time, but then they left. He, gate men. He does super gates. Gates that you will see and you say, wow, who did this? Governors of various states call him to come and install super gates in their homes, in their, their government houses. There is no gate that gate men build that is less than 2.5 million. No single gate. But that does not mean he cannot do, they cannot do smaller things. So if somebody who was working in a bank can go and do gates, that's what he does. There was one time I had automated gates. Uh, you press a button and that gate opens, you press a button, the, the gate closes. I bought from him and I know how much I paid for that gate and I know if you offer that young man job today to say, please come and work in... Uh, World Bank, he will not agree to work because of the opportunity he has seen in entrepreneurship. You know, so mental work is also an opportunity for you. This opportunity exists in one thing or the other, and this is mental works. Again, there are doors, security doors you can make, and people will say, you know, most of the security doors we buy today from Turkey, from India, China, if you, if, if you test them with real weapons, they will cave in. So, an opportunity for you, if you want to do metal work, decide to do a bulletproof door. Bulletproof door that is beautiful, and you try with any kind of weapon, and it will not break. It's an opportunity. People will look for it, because there's insecurity in this country. So, this is, first of all, don't forget that I said, there must be a need and the need today is a need to secure your place. People want to secure their houses. So if you want to go into metal work, metal doors, metal windows, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Go and learn about it. Learn on what to do to make sure no bullet can pass through a door. You will even sell more than the Turkish doors that we have today. It's an opportunity for you to go and identify such things. Of course, there are major things like Tables you use in churches, in this kind of place, there is a lot of metal work on it. Now, the one that is very unique today, that is making so much waves, is the opportunities in ICT. 
I C T. Information and Communication Technology. Now, ICT is such a very large place. Um, I'm sure you will know Emma Plaza. Emma Plaza, do you? Where if your phone spoils, that's where you take it to. Now, those people that repair your phones are graduates like you. All of us started, we knew nothing about mobile phone before it came to Nigeria. So, they lent it somehow. I don't know how the first set of people even lent it. But somehow they lent it. There's, there has never been any time I went to Emma Plaza to do something on my phone that I didn't spend anything up to 5,000 5, naira and above. Those guys that are seated with just one table and one chair, they are making so much money. On daily basis, in fact, I had to ask one on daily basis, like, how much do you make? First of all, he laughed. He said, oh, guy, it depends on the, the cases that come, but on an average, 300,000 every day. From repairs of phones, 300,000 every day. Somebody told me. Multiply 300,000 by six. What does that give you? You know what it gives you? Whatever it gives you, multiply it by four. That's how much they make every month. The kind of cars you, you see parking in Emma Plaza, those boys packed all those cars. So, why wear tie and go from morning till evening, every Monday to Friday, and there is nothing? You wait until the month end before you end your salary. Tell yourself that era is gone. That era is gone. Okay. So, <clears throat> I also have one guy in um, um, this village. What do they call it? Um, phone village. What's it called now? GSM village. Good. GSM village. The guy repairs all kinds of laptops. There was one time my son's laptop was um, was bad the screen was bad i took it to the guy the guy just did one thing or the other i went and changed the screen and i paid as much as 40 something thousand naira gsm village repairing laptop laptop and so in repairing laptop he also sells laptop so one of the days he fixed my the, my son's laptop he followed me to, to my car to give me, to help me to put the laptop in my car. He said, sir, let me go and get my card from my car and give you. When I turned, I saw 300, Mercedes 300 E-Class. That was what the boy opened as his own car. And he brought his card to give me. If he was working in one place or the other, do you think he would have, a young boy, a young boy, do you think he would have had that kind of car? And that was just like, you could know that this guy, if I paid him, and some other people, some other people were waiting to collect their jobs. This is the kind of money young men and women like you are making. So, if I've had this lecture, in your mind, you are not stirred up to think of what to do, then we wasted our time talking to you today. If after this lecture, you are not stirred up, you need to, in fact, you're not supposed to sleep today. You must be thinking about what it is you must do. You people are laughing, Abby. This is serious business. All right, so um, I mentioned all the names people told me you knew. Fluter Wave, just recently, Fluter Wave is just, by the way, Two years old, young man that is le that's in his titles. Two years old company. You know how much they are worth now? Three billion dollars. Do you believe that? They are worth over three billion dollars. Fluter wave of two years ago. Now the question I usually ask, and I ask people, 
That guy, does he have two heads? Does he have two heads? If you check in school, he probably was not the best student in his department. By the way, most of the people that are even making all the waves, most of them didn't finish university. But your own, you even have opportunity of having good knowledge. These guys didn't finish university. Most of them didn't. But you are lucky that you're even finishing. Now, if somebody like that can develop a payment system that's making him worth up to $3 billion within two years, I wonder what we're sitting down doing. If any day we press our phone, we're not making money, we have wasted all the credit we bought for that phone. Better know, do you know the, 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 the video game, the video game you play, there is something you call play to win. You know about it? The video game you play, there's something you call play to win. As you're playing that video game, money is dropping into your account if you get into the right app. Do you know about it? Some people know, some people don't know. So, there is a lot of opportunity in ICT. I can't even start counting that there are so many, so, so many. If, in, if you're going into fintech, financial technology, there are a lot of opportunities in there. Now, another opportunity, let me just give you a hint. There is something called blockchain technology. You, you have heard about it before? Cryptocurrency is only very little part of blockchain technology. The other day, um, CBN launched eNaira, just a few days ago. They launched eNaira. eNaira is sitting on blockchain technology. Flutterwave is sitting on blockchain technology. Opay is sitting on blockchain technology. So if I were you, I would say, okay, this blockchain, what is it all about? I will start studying something about blockchain technology. People are sitting down making millions, at least thousands of dollars from their, from their laptops through one thing or the other they are doing in blockchain technology. It is not illegal. It is not, it's not, it's not Ponzi. It's not a Ponzi thing. It is genuine money people are making and they are spending their money. So please identify that there are opportunities that exist in ICT. Opportunities. In automobile repairing of cars, I have a lot of graduates who have identified the kind of cars they want to repair. Um, sometimes I want to give an example, but I will restrain myself so that they don't look like this man is trying to make mouth. There are certain cars that we have in this Abuja. If you want to really get good mechanics for them, you won't get them. Except you bring mechanics from Lagos or from some companies in Lagos. Now, if you identify yourself to say, all I will do is to repair Mercedes cars only, or to repair BMW cars, or to say, let me even learn how to repair all these Japanese cars, especially Toyota cars. Yes, you are a graduate. Many people who are handling the best cars today are graduates. They didn't just finish from primary school. They are graduates, but the fact is that they went to learn how to do these things. And so, this one does not even require capital. Go and learn how to repair certain cars, and whether you're a mechanical engineer, or you read English, or you read history, or you read business admin, it does not matter. Go and think of, that's an opportunity. I'm not saying everybody should go. You must have that interest before you go in there. There are people who repair TVs. In my village, the guy who keeps terrorizing everybody in terms of once you bring any land for sale in my village, in my village, one guy who, what he does is to repair TV. That's his work, repairing of TV. He's a graduate. Once there's any land for sale, it is this guy that will offer. If the land, the worth of the land is one million, the guy will even offer three million. Everybody will leave it for him to buy. He repairs TVs. TV. Today in this Abuja, many TVs, you don't see good repairers for them. The difference between your own learning and the learning of somebody who just did secondary school is that you're going to learn faster. 
if they say something is IC, you understand what IC means. And you understand the importance of IC in the thing. Please, there are so many things you can learn to become an entrepreneur. What we said is that the error of finishing and somebody will ask you, so what next? You say, I don't know, I'm looking for a job. Whose job are you looking for? Who's, who will create that job for you? You have to create it yourself. Your head, your hand, your mind must create it. There is no job waiting for you to, to be occupied. There is no job. If we were talking to you about jobs, I would have told you, make sure you have first class so that when they put an advert, you will be called. I, I haven't said anything like that. My own is that open your eyes right now around your environment, find out where there is need, and go and have interest in that. Learn about it and pursue it. All right. In building, imagine the, kind, the number of things that are existing in this building. And when we talk about building, don't look at ordinary building. This is a complex building. This building here is a complex building. Somebody's technology did the POP. This is POP, or well, ceiling. Um, somebody did the lightings. There are sound engineers, sound engineers, that except they do their own engineering work on the sound, if I'm talking using this microphone, you guys won't hear me. There are people who do POP. And for any POP you do in this town, it can never be anything less than two million naira. POP. You know what POP? Plaster, plaster of Paris. That's the meaning. Plaster of Paris. The POP you do in buildings, there is no POP you do in this town that will be less than two million, especially for a, a standard building. For this kind of, if you cover POP on this, it cannot be anything less than 20 million. It cannot be anything less than that. So imagine you are an expert in POP alone. Imagine you are an expert in POP and you do a great job in building technology. And you do a great job. Everybody is going to be calling you. Everybody. Now, there are people who have blocks. If every block that we have today is, if you throw it on the ground, it breaks. Why don't you decide that you're going to start a block, block making uh, industry where even if you throw the block on the ground it will not break I saw one somebody sent to me from the US recently blocks were put on a tipper, tipper and that tipper was tipping the blocks not one broke not even a single block broke and it was they were all tipped they were not carried down now opportunities exist in block molding you don't need so much capital to do block molding you don't. But believe in what you want to do and you grow like the same Moody I talked about that is a multimillionaire today. Is it to do electrical works? You don't have to be an electrical engineer to do electrical works. And for people to know that you are an electrical expert, you must not do it yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. The man called Richard Branson. Do you know him? Richard Branson is a known man all over the world. He owns Virgin Atlantic. He owns Virgin, Virgin Cola. He owns Virgin, many, wherever you see Virgin this, Virgin that, he's the owner. He didn't read aeronautics engineering to own Virgin Air. There was one time Virgin Atlantic almost took British Airways out of the market because he said he's from UK. So, all you need to do is to believe in what you want to do and do it very well. You don't need to study physics to know how to do fan. You don't need to study building, building uh, technology to know how to mold blocks. All you need to do is to have interest in it and take it up. Tiling is also an opportunity in building. You know, I say most of these things because these are opportunities that you guys um, overlook. And because we overlook them, we leave them in the hands of people who didn't go to school. We leave them in the hands of people who will not give details, give, who will not give attention to details. If you go to school, 
as you are in school and you come and do tiling, it's probably going to be the best in the market. Probably going to be the best in the market. So tiling is such a thing that once you tile a house, the bill cannot be anything less than one million. It cannot be. And so somebody pockets this money. We allow these people who didn't go to school to make this money and we wear our ties, carrying our files and our certificates saying we are looking for jobs. So these are opportunities we are missing. Everybody here is wearing clothing. Clothing, clothing, clothing. Well, I'm wearing one. You plow wearing your clothing. All these clothing are made by people. Most of them are graduates. I know many of them that are doing so well. The Moody I talked about is clothing he does. So if clothing is what you want to do, I talked about clothing before, but if clothing is what you want to do, be the best in it. Be the best. I can tell you, there is a teller I know. He's my friend. He's in Enugu. This guy, please don't think I'm, I can mention his name. Um, Z, 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 Z something. That's the name of his business. For people who are in Enugu, you know him. This guy was a magistrate. He was a lawyer. He trained in, as a lawyer in University of Ife, then what we call OAU today. He worked as a lawyer and then became a magistrate. He pulled out as a magistrate. He makes clothes like this. He makes clothes like this. All the senators we see today, all the governors we see today, if it's not his clothing, they're not wearing. There is nothing he makes that is less than 100,000. Not even a single one. This guy has built houses everywhere in Abuja. He has done many things just by sewing clothing. For male or for female duvet that we use, bed sheets that we use, if that's what you want to do, that's a major line of business. My friend, I'm a member of IBB Golf Club. My friend was wearing one shoe one day, and I said, this is beautiful. He said, can I tell you something? Can I shock you? I said, what? Well, he said, it's my niece that manufactured these shoes. The lady is in Lagos, her factory in Lagos, a graduate of biochemistry. Biochemistry has nothing to do with making our shoes. In fact, I developed so much interest that I had to call that lady and I introduced myself and I asked, she said she did one year training, one year training in Lagos, learning how to make shoes. Today, when they are doing an exhibition in Lagos Trade Fair, she comes, everybody will come to her. Who's controlling this? <clears throat> okay, thank you. So, and I asked her, how did you get into shoemaking? You guys need to see this lady's shoes that she makes. A lady, a lady, a lady. She said she learned how to make shoes in Lagos, somewhere in Lagos. She does it herself. She does it herself. She makes all these um, normal shoes, school shoes, and then sneakers that you, you use to take a walk and all that. Very beautiful thing she does. And usually during trade fairs, well, when I was DG Abuja Chamber of Commerce, she brought her products to Abuja for trade fair. People were rushing her products. She manufactured them herself. You know, so I say these things because opportunities are so many. It depends on where you have your interest. If you offer that girl a job today in CBN, she will not take your work. She will not take it. 
I have had people I asked, do you want to work here? They said no. They don't want to work. They are happy doing what they are doing. Now, there is also opportunity in catering, cooking, and you post online. People order for your food. You deliver to them. You don't need to own a dispatch rider or dispatch motorcycle. There are people who offer their services. You can use them to deliver. Delivery services. You cook. People want your soup. You cook. As the thing is boiling in, on fire, you post. You take picture of it and post online. Others will come. I know I've ordered for food like that before. Just because somebody finished cooking and the thing looked so attractive to me, I ordered. And they started delivering. And that's how some people are getting their food. And that's how some people are making their money. So that's why I say, you don't need to say there is no capital. It's not all the businesses you need capital to start. You know, so those are the opportunities. You can do online, you can cook, and people will come to you. Catering is a service. You must not be the person that will enter the kitchen to cook. All you need to do is to engage very good cooks. When they cook, people will come and treat them well. That's all. Service. So that's another opportunity for ladies here or men, you think that is your interest. Catering is a super opportunity for you to start employing people. There are many such opportunities existing. All right, so there are many of these things, opportunities exist in everything. In export business, now people in um, places like uh, Kogi State, Benue State, and all those places, when we pass, we see a lot of cashew trees. And we see cashew fruits sold for nothing. Meanwhile, the nuts that are coming from these things are sold for so much money outside the country. Have you considered being an exporter of those things that you buy for almost nothing? Have you considered gathering these nuts and processing them and exporting them and you start earning your money in dollars? We have sesame seeds somewhere in the north. We have um, many of them that you can start exporting. In my church, in my church the other day, a young lady gave testimony. Her own was charcoal. You know charcoal that we get from cooking? Charcoal. She posted something online for charcoal exportation. Please pay attention. And so, she got a call from some guys from, from Dubai. They said, can you send a sample of that to your charcoal to us? She just picked a few, packaged it, and sent to them through Korea. They received it, tested it, and brought back a feedback. Can you supply us 10 containers of this every month? We'll pay you ahead of time. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating this. And that was the testimony she was giving in church. They paid her for the first 10 containers. When she delivered the first 10 containers, these guys were pumping her with so much money for export of charcoal. That girl didn't have to study charcoal technology to do that. So these are opportunities that exist in every field. Charcoal was her own. She earns her money in dollars today because of charcoal. So, now, having said all these things, if I continue to, there are many opportunities in all these areas. There are many opportunities. But let us even now leave all the opportunities and go to the problems that you may see. So, the first problem, like many people talk about, the first problem is funding, which people talk about. Don't forget that when I said that, I said, don't consider funding, that's financing the business as a problem. There are many places. When Prof was introducing this lecture, he said, you must understand how to do a good business plan. Please pay attention, pay attention. You must understand how to do a good business plan. Now, <clears throat> there's something we call pitching. Pitch. P 
teaching is there are many people, many asset management companies, many venture capitalists. I will explain who, what they do. There are many of them, they have excess money. They have their monies looking for businesses to invest in. So, the process of bringing those people that have excess money and people that need this money, that process is called pitching. Pitch, 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 pitching. Kuda, have you heard about Kuda Microfinance Bank? Kuda didn't have money, Koba, from his pocket. It was through pitching that he got funding in dollars. There are many of them like Kuda that are doing so much with other people's money. Many of them. So all you need to do after learning this business and you don't have money, go and learn how to put and write a very good business plan. Somebody who did not go to school cannot write a good business plan. You must not also be the starter and finisher of your business plan. There are people who, ha who are experts in writing business plan. Engage them and transfer your ideas to them so that they give you a good business plan. When you do, then there are many of these people who are looking for investments to invest in. There is something we also call crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is that you are going to be like five of you, six of you that have the same interest. Then you decide to put your monies together. All of you go and look for money, but let everybody come back with 10, 10 million, for example. Crowdfunding. You can actually crowdfund your, your business, and all of you will do the same business and do it well. Now, there are institutions like Bank of Industry. Do you know Bank of Industry? Bank of Industry is a government bank. It's a development bank. Their own is to make sure that they fund manufacturing businesses. And they are always looking for ones to fund because they have a lot of money. They're looking for people to fund. Once you have a good business plan, they will actually expect you to also make certain contributions. Sometimes they will help you to get people who will make the contribu financial contribution before they will give you their own money. So the most important thing is that you have interest in what you're doing. Another thing is that you have written a very good business plan, then the money will come. I talked about venture capitalists. Venture capitalists are financial institutions that are looking for businesses to invest in. There are many of them. There are many of them. You can Google venture capitalists in Nigeria. In fact, recently I did a study for Abuja Chamber of Commerce to tell them about how to, um, uh, you know, you, having venture capitalists coming together with inventors and people who want to, who have created certain opportunities, how to get them together. So if you Google venture capitalists in Nigeria alone, you will see all their names and all their contacts, even the pictures of their CEOs. So you can even do a very good business plan and call those numbers you are seeing there, start interacting with them on the phone. They may have meetings with you through Zoom, and then they may meet with you. If they're comfortable with your business plan, they will invest in your business. They will invest in your business. And don't be afraid of failure. The first enemy, the first enemy of entrepreneurship is fear. The first enemy of entrepreneurship is fear. Don't be afraid of failure. Because things that will shake you will happen. But when you remain consistent with what you're doing, there is no failure that will happen. So I have told you, Google venture capitalists in Nigeria. There are many venture capitalists outside the country also. Depending on where you want to get your own from, there are a lot of them in Dubai. Venture capitalists in Dubai. Venture capitalists in China. There are many. So wherever you want to get your funding from, your own is to make sure you have done a very good, attractive 
business plan, then start calling them and be ready to defend your business opportunity. So funding has been taken care of. I'm not saying your family members, if they can afford it, fine. But if they cannot afford it, know that you can actually get your funding from all the things I have said. Another problem with entrepreneurship is lack of training. You know I talked about training. Try to train yourself. Even if it takes you one whole year, try to train yourself. Some institutions train. It can even be a university somewhere. Let me tell you what I did when I finished speaking with that lady. I saw that I made shoes in Lagos. I googled to check whether there was any institution in, of course, Italians do the best leather works. So I decided to Google. There was a university of shoemaking. The university, what, it, what they do is just shoes and bags. Or well, leather university. That's all they do. So I checked a little more. Not so much money you pay and you go to that university to learn how to make shoes, all kind of shoes. They will expose you to where to get the raw materials. They will also expose you to the market for your shoes. You know, so please don't sit down and think that um, life will be the same way it used to be before. You have to keep pushing and keep moving. Um, now, the next thing is lack of capacity. If you don't have capacity, and what creates the capacity is you. If you say, no, I cannot do this, the first question you ask yourself is, the person that has done it, how many heads do they have? That's the question. Keep asking yourself that question. How many heads do they have? I'm sure we're used to our parents asking us those questions. The person that came first in that class, how many heads do they have? Isn't it? So, this is the time to ask yourself that question. Um, you must create the capacity to do it. Think big. Think big. Think that you can do it. And then you see that you will do it. The only thing that's going to restrain you is one thing. It is only one thing that can stop you. Do you know what that is? Yourself. One, one thing, one person that can stop you, just yourself. Once you agree that you can do this, then you can develop your training, you can develop your capacity. The next thing which is related to the capacity is lack of will. You must have the will and the commitment to do it. You know, I said before, the greatest enemy of this is fear. So you must have the will. I want to succeed. It does not matter how many times you fail. Continue trying. We have our current president. You know how many times he attempted to be president before he won this one, isn't it? Continue to try all the time. It does not matter how many times you are failing, but keep, remain, have a strong will to succeed. So, having said all this, having said all this, I now can tell you that it is only you, only you, that is stopping yourself from thinking of what you want to become and what you want to do. No other person but you. I like the story, I, there's a story in the Bible I like. So for Muslims, forgive me, but just enjoy the story. It's a story in Kings, in the Bible. That story talked about the four leprous men that were in the gate of Samaria. You know the story? There was so much hunger in that city. So much hunger in the city. And so nobody was dashing them money anymore. So people, there was so much hunger in that city that nobody was dashing them hunger, um, food anymore. So hunger was going to kill them. So one of them said, gentlemen, why do we stay here until we die? If we go into the city, 
hunger will kill us. If we remain here, hunger will kill us. So why don't we take a move, make a move? If we die, we die. But if we don't die, then we succeed. I want that story to, to lead you in everything you're doing. Take a bold step. Don't remain where you are. You must take a step. If you fail, you fail. But if you don't fail, you succeed. Thank you very much. So this is an opportunity for your questions now. We will take questions. So if you have a question, there's a microphone here for you. We'll take your questions. If there's any confusion, oh boy, there's somebody there. If there's any confusion, let us know. Okay, this is my question. I noted that when you talked about issue of training. So I want to ask concerning this, that if the kind of business of adventure you want to adventure into is a new type of business that has never been done, how can you be trained? How can you get around with the ideas because they are new? What do you do about that? So my question here is that, what is your, I mean, uh, what if your idea or business idea is a new one? that you have not been established before. How do you go about it? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, the question, his question is, if your idea is a new one, how do you get trained since you are the first person in that idea? You see, the good thing that we have today is, don't forget that that idea is your own idea. That means there is something you want to solve. Something you want to solve. So that means you even come up with a little idea on your own in the first place. But technology has created everything for us. Go to Google. Go to other search engines. You will see that there is nothing you think, everything you think is new has been researched before and you get all the ideas you want to get. The trainers may not be physical, but Online, you can get every training you want to get. And from there, you dig, you dig more and more. You can get trained online if your idea is still uh, a new one. There's somebody there. <clears throat> Thank you very much, sir. My question actually uh, goes, let me say, indirectly to my director of entrepreneurship. I always have the challenge that, okay, when entrepreneurship uh, situation comes up, it's about identifying a problem and also focusing your energy into developing a solution to that problem. So I've been personally having a challenge when some courses were introduced into the university, but I've been so happy for entrepreneurship studies to be introduced. But there are other courses that were introduced that I kind of take it back because me personally, I'm not just comfortable with uh, such GST courses, especially uh, Japanese language. Because me personally, I say, okay, why can't I focus my energy in entrepreneurship studies? I've been here for more than 20 years in Abuja, and I've been in the system, that is government. I'm back to school. So I'm more interested in putting my energy in, in entrepreneurship than learning Japanese language. So I'm giving... I'm, I'm just asking you, if possible, that those courses that are not really um, relevant, I'm an ICT guy, graphic and printing, those courses that are not really relevant, why should I, as a public admin, why should I go and put my energy into those courses? Hello, hello. Hey, please, hello, please give us your attention. Somebody, one of you is asking a very intelligent question, and you are making noise. Don't, questions like this will come from in your exam, if you don't know. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Um, yes, I'm going to address this question. 
Oh, he has not yes. finished. Okay. So my challenge is that as a young man who has been in Abuja as, and also resigned from the federal government to do a freelancing business in graphic design and printing, I know how much we're making in the industry. And you did mention UTC Area 10 because we are the people in that place. So my challenge is that why can't I focus my energy in those areas, especially entrepreneurship studies, in those areas that will put money in my pocket? I'm not saying that other courses are not relevant, but I'm just saying that some of us in that place, we are finding it difficult All right, to thank go you with very, Thank you very thank much. You, <clears throat> I know when he asked this question, you guys clapped. You know why you clapped? Your minds have been so... Your mind, your mind is myopic now. Let me explain this. Do you know that many Nigerians today studying the language of Chinese, Chinese language? Do you know there are many Nigerians who have paid money, paid money to go and study Chinese? Most of the technologies that we do today are coming from Asia, Japan, China, um, some other Asian countries. If I were you, I should even think this is an opportunity that you don't want to miss. When I was in secondary school, we, we joked with French as a language. I was one of the people that joked. You know, things like, we will create fun out of French language. Today, I regret not studying French in secondary school. I regret it. So many Nigerians have also gone to, gone to Alliance Francaise to learn French. You know, so there's always an advantage of knowing another language because you may not have that... Um, uh, you may not know that advantage today. Tomorrow is going to be useful to you. Your business can take you to Japan, and you, only, you cannot imagine how they will trust you if you speak their language, and if they know, you can understand them. You can be an international um, person in doing your business. You can sell to the Japanese market because you understand their language. So when you limit yourself to Abuja, you may not see the importance of that language, but what, who says you cannot export your product to Japan and you communicate with them in their own language? That's the advantage you are saying there. Thank you. Any other person? Okay, there's a lady there. Question is um, financing. Now, as a student who wants to, you know, kind of start a business, are there any institutions that are willing to finance a student, you know, without any securities? You know, entrepreneurship, like you want to venture into a business as a student and you don't have anything right now, but you need finance. Are there institutions that are willing to finance? you as a student? Okay, the kind of financing you may need may depend on the kind of business you want to start. Many times, there are individuals also, I have seen a lot of them, individuals who are also looking for very good businesses to invest in. Forget the fact that you're a student. They are looking at the business, not you as a student. If that business is attractive to them, an investor is looking for how his or her money will come back and how he or she will make money from your business. So whether your business, or whether your student or not, is not their concern. Your concern is the quality of the business you are introducing to them. So the kind of funding or financing you get depends on how well you have packaged your business. Through business plan, some of them may not even require a business plan, but of course, all those ones are really small ones that you want to start tailoring. How much is machine? You say machine is uh, 40,000 naira. They will give you, they will give you 100,000. Those, those are not the kind of business I'm talking about. But there are such opportunities too, where somebody can believe in what you want to do. Oh, they have seen what you have sewn. You want to do tailoring of clothing. And they say, oh, you made this, but they, you, you tell the person, my problem is that I don't have a machine. They said, okay, I'll give you 100,000. Pay me back in the next one year. There are such people. So it depends on what you want to do. There's 
someone who wants to ask a question online. Oh, okay. Okay, there's somebody online. Thanks, sir, for this impactful session. My question is, are there any entrepreneurial practical training platform you could recommend for us, either in school here or in the economy as a whole? Um, there are many. There are many. Now, um, I mentioned something like um, blockchain technology, for example. If you don't know anything about blockchain technology, or you want to even know anything about it, if you just say lectures on blockchain technology, there are many of them that will show up, and you can actually learn them online. In this city today, there are people who can teach you blockchain technology. There are some of them. I can even tell you some of them. Um, um, there is a company called Convexity, convex, like convex and concave mirror. Convexity is a company that is an expert. They are experts in blockchain technology. If you Google Convexity, they are here. They will charge you some money. You will learn about blockchain. There are people who can teach you one thing or the other. But for some of them, you actually go and sit down with them. If you are learning to do iron works, for example, you have to go and learn on the job and learn there and use your hand and do it and know that it's working. But please, always use your Google. Google can tell you everything. It will also show you the people where you can learn all these things from. Sitting here, you may not know all of them, but all of them are on Google. Where, uh, how can I learn about anything you want to do? The thing will show you. They're all over the place. Two more questions before we close. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, my question goes like this. Is it good to engage someone who just finished from secondary school in an entrepreneurship? Because I have this experience, which is my little brother, my younger brother, have this, I'm into this uh, distribution of Gary to different states in my place before I start school. So before I start, I call him and I hand over everything to him. This is how we supply this and that. Then when it is time for this guy to start university now, the guy said no, he will not go to school again. That he wants to focus on the business and something like that. So what do you have to say about that? Is it good to engage those who are yet to enter university in an entrepreneurship program or into a business? Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Most of the things that happen have some other dimensions. F why I'm saying this is that there is no thing that is cast in stone. Maybe in his case, it may not be. Maybe in another case, it may not be. But um, it depends. If the man says he wants to concentrate and he's doing well, and you think he's doing very well, don't also forget that Mark Zuckerberg, we all know, right? Didn't finish from Harvard. Um, Bill Gates didn't finish. Hewlett and Packard, HP, did not. Michael Dell, that owns Dell Computers, did not finish. So, but if he's doing so well, I'm not saying you push should not finish your, make sure you finish your school. But if he is doing well and he's doing very well and you think his education is not an inhibition to success of that business, so be it. Encourage him, but don't forget that there are, other, there are online schools. He can still do that business and still do school online. Now, there is something I tell people who, who want to succeed in their businesses. Never engage in a workplace, in your business, Somebody, you cannot fire at will. You cannot sack at will. Don't engage somebody. You cannot fire when the person misbehaves. And who are these people? Brothers, sisters, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. You sack your sister-in-law, your wife is quarreling with you in the house. 
But this person has done something that if the person was not related to you, would have sacked the person. So I tell people, if you want to have the best hands, do an advert. Select the best people. Don't wait until it's your brother that is managing it. That's the only person that will not treat you. No, no, no. It does not work in business if you want to succeed. Get the best hands. Don't employ people you cannot sack at your will when they misbehave. Do you understand that? All right. One, I saw one more hand. Yes. Thank you, sir. So my question is, for the training um, aspect of entrepreneurship, usually some of these trainings requires a whole lot of money to go into them. Training? Yes, to train. Depending on the field you're actually pursuing. Now, now some of us as students, we have the passion to learn some of these things. Okay. Which one do you have passion to do? I have the passion for um, fashion designing and catering. Catering? Yes, sir. But basically, how to go into them is a big challenge and also how to combine it with my studies. Also, how do you get to meet your audience? Like today, we have you in our midst. But after now, it seems abstract because we don't know where to find them. You might be doing something very beautiful and post it online, but you don't get the people that are interested in those things. So how do you okay. organize? Thank you very much. <clears throat> First of all, let's deal with your training. It's not all the time that training is very expensive. It's not all the time. In fact, you can even come to somebody and you, t you show your willingness to learn. And you negotiate with the person, maybe a woman or a man. You say, Madam, after learning, I cannot pay you one couple now, but after learning, I will serve you for a period of, say, one month, two months. I will, I will work here for you, and you won't pay me anything. Those are the kind of things you can get into. There are, you know, it depends on the kind of person, it depends on the kind of business. Now, you can also decide that after, you, when you go there, you tell the woman, oh, I don't have enough, or the man, I don't have enough, but can I pay you just the little one I have? If I make some clothing, once I start working, I can pay. There are such things. Now, um, for whether you can combine what you have interest in today and your studies, yes, you can. I have a relation in UNN right now. She has interest in what you have interest, sewing of clothing. And I've seen the one she made. Her first problem was that she didn't have a sewing machine. So I said, okay, but do you have space where you can do? How can you combine these two things? Don't come back and tell me that because you are sewing, you couldn't make a good result. She said, no, she will make a good result. Okay, she got a machine. Um, where do I put a machine? No space in the school. She, there was one space somewhere where they were doing all this photocopy, photocopy. She found a space there and put something above her machine. So are people coming to her now? Yes, they are coming to her. She has never missed one lecture since she started that thing. She has somebody helping her in her absence. The person will be sewing. Now, um, the people speaking for her are the people wearing the clothing she has made. Where did you make this thing? Is this girl that's in this department? She's the person that made this clothes. Eh, where is she? So people keep coming to her even when she's still schooling just because she has made something that is unique. You know, so those are the things. You must create your time. You must create your time. Okay, if my lecture is so so time, I attend lecture, I'll come to my workshop, but in the evening I must read. I must read.
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you will all agree with me that it has been a, a very exciting session. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have further questions, please, you can send it online. We will respond to those questions. But just like I said in the beginning, the purpose of this lecture or interaction is to expose you to the real world reality. Now, how many times did you hear the, the facilitator talking about model, assumptions, theory? These are the things we teach. But it's giving you practical examples of what happens on the field. I learned about Muti, a Nigerian, who is very successful in what he's doing, doing today. And also, one important thing. I don't know how many of you have been to your class. And the first in the lecture will tell you that if you want to do anything, start with prayer. How many of your lecturers have done that? We do it, but we don't teach it in the class. But those who practice in the field, they know this is important and they have to tell you. So these are some of the gaps that exist between theory and practice. And that's why we are bringing them in to come and expose you to more to all this. For now, uh, uh, the power supply has even made it possible for us to come to the end of the session for today. Uh, this lecture will continue next week. For the group B, uh, group B part of this class, this is group A. We cannot continue with group B now because uh, the person who is supposed to come and facilitate it has some logistic problems. So we will not be here for the, two, for the 12 to 2 sessions. So the lecture will be through next week for the group B. And for your group A, that will pop up in the afternoon session, we will communicate to you. Please check your mail, all the online communication, social media, everything. You will get even the lecturers and more information on what we are going to be doing. So thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a good day.